right now I'm carving a, doing the final carving on a mandolin top. The outside gets carved first to get the shape and then then I work the inside to get the thicknesses. Here I have a micrometer, very crucial part of the of all string instruments, but the mandolin, like a violin, is composed of a, a graduated top and back, meaning that the plate is thicker in the middle and gets thinner towards the edges to work as like a speaker, like a diaphragm. So depending on the piece of wood and the um, desired outcome, I, I can vary the, the final thicknesses somewhat for response and uh, some woods are harder than other woods. They can be made a little bit thinner, they're a little bit stiffer. So the care here is just to take the wood away very gently, checking constantly for thicknesses. Don't want to go too far, but it's very important to get the plate working it like a speaker, basically. Just like a speaker. Um, way it reacts. I've carved many, 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 many of these tops and backs. I could almost do it blindfolded, but that's not a good idea. So what happens if you don't get the thickness right at this stage? Well, you you still have, you can get a good sounding instrument, but the subtleties um, uh, balance and um, subtleties of tone get lost in, a, in an instrument that's too stiff. You, do, you don't get the, the immediate response to a light touch to, to, for the sound to come out. And um, a lot of the nicer, sweeter tones can get lost in the stiff top. It has to, all the frequencies have to be able to vibrate. And if you want to end up with a, a balanced sounding instrument, very good bass as well as good treble. And that's a, that's a lot to ask for, especially in a small instrument. To get uh, both extremes in the spectrum is, is the desired goal. And it, it, it can be very elusive at times. So you, you have to know, take into account, um, um, I, I like to think three things that are important with, a, um, especially the top, is the weight, uh, the overall weight, the stiffness, end to end, and the density, which is somewhat uh, correlates to um, weight, but not always. So the idea is to get the plate to a point where it can respond and not be too tight. And I guess the experience is the only thing that kind of is my guide. Um, but um, I, I try to take it to a certain point, a spec point where it's uh, within a ballpark and then really, really fine tune it. And some of that is done after the plate is on the top of the instrument, is glued onto the instrument. And then I work this, the, the edges here, very much like the edge of a speaker so that this plate can actually move like a diaphragm. And that, there's only so much you can do ahead of time. You have to be able to fine tune it afterwards. Yeah, I like to say that uh, every day, uh, if I don't learn something every day in the shop, I'm not paying attention because there is so much to see. It's it's very similar to playing music that you know you 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 can never know it all. You like to think you do, but you don't, and uh, that's the challenge: is, is getting better every day. A lovely quote, uh, Pablo Casal, a great cellist, was asked, Pablo, why do you, why do you practice every day? You, you're the best in the world. And he said, I think I'm about to get it.